So I do a lot of blogs, and uh, this is actually one of my favorite and most interesting ones that I've done in a while, just because it was um, not unexpected, but a little bit more surprising than what I thought. So here it goes. We're learning what a vital role good gut bacteria plays in immune health, brain health, mood, and of course your gut health. One of the best quotes of all time is health comes from above, down, inside out. We also know that the best way to beef up your good gut bacteria is through eating lots of different kinds of vegetables and fruits every day. But researchers have discovered yet another important way to promote healthy gut bacteria. Ready? Regular exercise. So I'm a little bit of a gym nut, so this one was, um, this one was a, a great plus for me. So our digestive tract is home to trillions of gut bacteria that weigh about three or four pounds altogether and are made up of over 1,000 different types of species and 5,000 different types of strains. This is the very definition of a symbiotic relationship. Our body depends on these gut bacteria to be healthy and the bacteria depends on us to be healthy as well. So having healthy gut bacteria levels helps us to metabolize nutrients, protect the intestinal wall, produce vitamin K and short chain fatty acids, or also known as SCFAs, which are important for immune health. They maintain health of the digestive tract, regulate immunity, prevent inflammation, and promote good brain health and function. In fact, many studies are even finding that Parkinson's may actually start in the gut and work its way up the vagus nerve into the brain. But that's another post for another blog. Very interesting stuff though. So as our understanding of healthy gut bacteria evolves, so does the information on how to cultivate your own microbiome while inhibiting overgrowth of bad bacteria that are infectious and pro-inflammatory. This balance of good and bad bacteria is often what is referred to as dysbiosis. Too many bad bugs, not enough good bugs. So initially, and still currently, Fermented foods and probiotics were thought to be the main recourse for improving healthy gut. And they do go a long way, but they are not the only way. Fast forward a couple years, we then learned that eating a diet comprised primarily of fruits and vegetables and continually changing up the produce you eat is a great way to develop a rich and diverse gut bacteria population. Not really in a surprise, but the, back, the research just backs that up. And now, scientists have used both a mouse study and a human study to show that regular exercise, independent of diet or other factors, also promotes healthy gut bacteria. Meaning that if you do nothing other than exercise, you can beneficially change your gut bacteria. Ah. So in the first study, researchers transplanted fecal material from both exercised and sedentary mice into mice with sterile guts. The activity level of the mice receiving the transplants clearly mirrored that of their donors, showing that the kind of gut bacteria that we have plays a role in how inclined we are to be sedentary or active. That is huge. So the exercise mice recipients also showed more bacteria than that produced butyrate or inbutyrate, a short chain fatty acid that promotes healthy intestinal cells. It reduces inflammation and increases energy. They were also more resistant to ulcerative colitis. Inbutyrate is the most important short chain fatty acid. Now in the second study, researchers tracked the composition of gut bacteria in 18 lean and 14 obese adults as they transitioned from a sedentary lifestyle to an active one and then back to a sedentary one. Now this isn't a huge study, but it is a study and the results were pretty cool. Their exercise routine consisted of 30 to 60 minutes of cardiovascular exercise three times a week for six weeks their diets remained the same, did not change. What they found was that exercise raised the levels of short chain fatty acids and then declined again as the subjects became sedentary. A rise in short chain fatty acids means concentrations of good, back, good, good gut bacteria increased. 
the lean participants showed more dramatic increases of short chain fatty acids than obese ones, not a huge surprise, and more diverse ratios of bacteria, suggesting obese people respond differently to exercise. Mm, duh. Nevertheless, increases happened in both populations. And this also becomes, as the obese people lose weight and gut bacteria changes, it becomes easier and easier for things to change. So the breakdown and takeaway from all of this is as follows. The gut bacteria influences how active we are and how active we are influences our gut bacteria. So this can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And once you get on that bandwagon, things can improve pretty quickly. So you exercise more, gut bacteria improves, activity increases more, and round and round we go. As is often the case with health, the answer is yes. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Yes, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy no matter which way you look at it, and you have to make a conscious effort to change your thoughts and your biology. As our knowledge of gut bacteria, functional medicine, and the human body continues to evolve, it nevertheless circles back to some age-old pearls of wisdom. Eat your veggies and exercise. It can go a long way to better health. And if that doesn't do the trick, come and see me. I'm Dr. Craig Mortensen. Be healthy. Be happy.